Day two of the Triple Crown Volleyball NIT is up and running in full force. 20 courts back in action. Thad Anderson back here at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Welcome back for day two of a three-day event on President's Day weekend. And the hit parade of celebrity guests continues on our uh, what we've dubbed the platform of prestigious people. Now, of course, platform is a volleyball term for your passing platform. And this platform happens to feature prestigious people. The prestigious person next to me today is Ron Cordes. Ron, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining us today. Ron is uh, an architect with Kiva Volleyball out of Louisville, correct. Kentucky. And uh, I think ASICS is still an appropriate uh, yeah, that's correct. front Kiva. runner to the that's name right. Kiva. So that's let's keep, right. keep ASICS recognized in there. Yeah. Ron Cordes, uh, the year 2000 was when Kiva got its start. Right. And now, about 17 years later, here you are. Here you are in Salt Lake City. Uh, in a little less than a month, you're running your Bluegrass Festival. Right. It's a busy time of year. It is a busy time of year. I, it seems like uh, January up to the first part of April every year uh, when spring break hits, it just seems like we're playing or doing something almost every weekend. So uh, it is busy. But, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, rather have it that way. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, as we talked about yesterday, if you saw some of our clips from yesterday and the guests we had, one of the, you know, the big umbrella picture here is 212 teams in Salt Lake City, Utah, for the Triple Crown Volleyball NIT. Over 400 college coaches roaming the, the floor of the Salt Palace Convention Center. Just a, a clash of top talent. But, you know, you say clash in the world of, of juniors volleyball and really in the, in the world of volleyball collegiately. It's such a collaborative sport. I know everybody wants to beat everybody when they're out on the courts, sure. but it's, it's really fun to watch all of the relationships, especially the club directors. I know we had Mike Lingenfelter up here yesterday, right. Mike with Muncieana, but the two of you mm-hmm. collaborated years ago, and now you, ago. now you compete, but you still collaborate. Tell us more. You know, you've seen a lot in the game. What is your perspective on maybe how volleyball, does it differ from other sports in the way that the sport tries to support itself? Well... I don't know. I, I think in some ways it's it's going to be different, but in and in other ways I think it's a lot the same. I mean, uh, trying to create that atmosphere you're talking about, compete on the court, and then uh, be peers and such and friends off the court. That's the way I like to do it. You know, I mean, I, I, that's the way we try to gear our kids. Sometimes we don't have control of all our parents to make it work that way. Right. But uh, and I think probably almost everybody would agree with me there. But for the most part. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of the way our kids conduct themselves. Uh, we do talk about sportsmanship, and you go hard, you step off the court. Uh, you know, if we, our kids will be hanging out with Montana kids or K2 kids. I mean, that's because we see them a lot. So yeah. they, they know each other, and I, I think that's great. That's the way it should be. Same with the coaches. Yeah. All right, so you co- here in Salt Lake City, you've got five of your teams here, right? Mm-hmm. Four teams right. all the way through 18s every right. single age. Now you're coaching with the 14s. You're also coaching at the high school level. I do. Scholastically, yes. so right. t- which is fascinating because the club versus high school dynamic can be interesting. What, what do you talk to people about as far as a, a young person? And you know, some say, I don't really need a high school game. I just need the club game. How do you approach that? Well, you know, to me and our kids, I speak for ours alone. I, I think so many of them have played club to be able to make their high school team. And I think the high school season, there are rivalries there that you really can't create in the club because you live in the same city or the same area. And, you know, so I know we can't replace though that kind of atmosphere in our club experience. And I, but I've always looked at club season. I, I've done it for a long time. I could never tell you one year what our record was because I think club season is a development season. And that's what we talk to our coaches about. You know, your job is, is to make those kids better in June than they were in January, mm-hmm. all right? And, and to make it a fun experience for them and you and everyone else, you know? So that's what we target. And then, again, it wraps back up, and a lot of these kids go back to their high school team and, they, and they make, make teams that hopefully they were going to make. Or, you know, and then these kids, what I really like is when I see them play against each other in high school, Again, they go at it on a court, but then you see them taking pictures in their various high school uniforms. Yeah. So uh, I like I like both. Yeah. And per- personally, I like being able to, you know, I coach at an 18 level in the high school, and then I get to come at 14. And 14 is a good age. At 14, 15, 
it's a great teaching age. Yeah. You know, so many times at, at 18, spotted coach went, they probably think they know most all of it by then. I was just going to ask you about yeah. that. So I, I coached, I've done about 20 years of baseball coaching, and, and one of the things I noticed was that 12 and 13 years old with the young ball players, right. they'll run through a wall for you, you know, that what, and if you tell them, hey, let's try holding the bats upside down today, hold them by the yeah, barrel, that's they'll right. give it a shot. Exactly. You coach a little older kid, and no disrespect yeah. to the older kid, but yeah, they've kind of, they're kind of going down a little different path. You know, it's so four, your coaching impact seems different. I always thought, you know, at 14, early ages, it's, it's teaching, and, and, and at the older age, it's more tweaking at that point. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you might mess with their approach a little bit, get their arms swinging a little higher, whatever. But uh, it, you're right, at the young age, that team right now, but you're right. If I told them to try to pass with their hands around their back, they'd, they'd give it a shot. They'll get in the face. Shoulder, them, shoulder right? bumps. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, maybe look at me funny. A6 Kiva out of Louisville, yeah. Kentucky is the club. And uh, you've been part of this Triple Crown Volleyball NIT for a few years now. You started off sort of dipped your toe into it, brought a team or two out, and then as the date changed... Yeah, when they had it later in the season, it kind of conflicted with some things we were doing. Uh, Then when we moved it to President's Day last year, we've been both years, and not only our coaches and and, and players like it, but our parents. I mean, they like walking in, and uh, you hear them talking about it all season last year. We walked in, and the first set, our first match was three, and the next one went three, and I mean, it was like... Just intense volleyball for yeah. three days, which that's what you want. That's yeah. what you're looking for. You yeah, know, it's, that's what we're looking for. We, I, yeah. I, I want to try to say it every day. We said it yesterday. This is like good rodeo. You come out with bull riding right away, right? Yeah, that's kind of exactly. what this is. You just get you on bet, the pole and go. Well, we try to, I try to, particularly our 14 said, we're not here last year. And I said, you know, you have to be ready to get out of the gate right away because yeah. there's, there's no warm up matches here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, they didn't quite, we didn't. We didn't get out of the gate very well. <laughs> so, but we'll, we'll do better today. So you could, uh, you know, geographically, you have some closer options. You could have stayed closer to home. Oh, yeah, this is, sure. This is a fairly good sized trip for you at this time of year, but obviously yeah. worth it for you to bring five year teams out here. It is. I mean, it, it, like I said, I think it's uh, whenever you you feel like you're uh, you're competitive with the better clubs in the nation, this is a chance for us to do that uh, since. USA Volleyball and other organizations have formed. So much of the end of the year is split. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was quite a few, a lot of years before we were able to play California teams. And uh, it had been years, and same with a lot in Texas. But here you get it all. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's all here. All that want to be here are here. Yeah. You know, so. Now, you have uh, coming up here in under a month, you've got your Bluegrass Festival, the right. event that you host. Tell us more about that. Well, we, you know, it started years ago, and uh, many right after we formed Tiva, uh, we started doing the bluegrass, and we do it in various different venues. And I guess it was about five, six years ago, we moved it in a convention center, expo center in our town, and it's just gradually grown each year. We've maxed it this year. We have just about 805 teams wow. coming in on a two-day. It's a two-day event, and uh, we're using 116 courts. And it's great competition. Uh, a lot of these teams will be there. Obviously, the western part of the states won't, but Florida and yeah. uh, A5 from Atlanta and K2. And, 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 and. But anyway, uh, all the way up and down the Midwest quarter will be in yeah. there. It's great competition. So, 116 courts? 116 courts. And over 800 teams? Over 800 teams, wow. yeah. Congratulations on that. That's quite well, a, quite a buildup. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's quite a it's quite a, a piece of work, but uh, <laughs> it, it's good, and we feel like we're putting on a good event. It's a uh, you know a, a player and club friendly event, and a lot, and that's what happens. A lot of clubs, they, I mean, they bring twenty teams, yeah. you know, because we have the various divisions yeah. for them. And I know as a club director, I always enjoy going to events that we can take a lot of our teams yeah. because. Socially, mm-hmm. it's good, you know, for our parents to get together. I enjoy it. It's easier, much easier for me to try to get around and watch them. Yeah. But when they're playing in different places, it's impossible. So, yeah, that's what's been great here. I've, I've watched all five of our teams play, and hopefully we're going to watch them play better today. So. so when you wrap up that Bluegrass Festival a couple days in March, do you get a chance to take a nap for about a week? <laughs> 
you know, I've always tried to plan a golf trip or something right <laughs> after that. So uh, that's in the works right now. Recharge the batteries. Oh, recharge, good. yeah. Good. Where are you looking at? Where are you, where are you trying to golf at this year? Well, we usually head to Florida. That's yeah. about the easiest. And yeah. Jump on a flight, get down in some warm weather. Hard, hard to go uh, wrong with that. Well, you know, so far it's been pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And tell us a little more. We, we referenced it briefly with Mike Lingenfelter of Montana yesterday, but the Power League that you run. Tell us more about how your Power League works. Well, it, you know, we started it, I guess, about five years ago now. And, and uh, uh, it's, you know, various 18s and 17s play and 16s, 15s, 14s, 13s of the group. And then we have three of, of days. Those all go four weekends. Uh, the 12s go three weekends. And the winner of each age group uh, wins their entry into the AAU championships in Florida mm-hmm. at the end of the year. And... Uh, so it pretty much travels around uh, Muncie, Indiana, Indianapolis. The teams from there, Tim, Indiana, and then Louisville, we use that site. And then we use a few other, Knoxville, where K2 is, we use it one, Lexington, Kentucky, uh, and Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm-hmm. So we try to move it around and, and make it where clubs that are traveling, uh, you know, Knoxville has a long way to get to Muncie, Indiana, yeah. you know, and so we're going to do one in Knoxville. They get to stay home in age group. <laughs> yeah. So. We try to be again, as friendly as we can with it. It's good competition. You know, people sometimes, well, you're playing the same teams over and over. But personally, I'd rather play good teams over and over than I would be going off the tournaments where I play three-quarters of the tournament without competition, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so at least you know uh, what you're doing. I mean, Muncie for instance, a couple of years ago, I think we played seven times in my age group. We were three and three. And they beat us in the finals at AUT in Orlando. So it was, just, you know, the same kind of thing. Uh, competition on the court. Uh, we we'll go off and drink a beer afterwards. Yeah. You know, so. A best of seven series with one with one club. That's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> well, we saw them in the Blue Grant. We see them in the Power League. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. But it's, to me, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. Yeah, like you said, you know what you're going to get. So you, you, know, you know you're going to have to hit a certain level of play every time you take yeah. the court. And I know when we play them, we're going to get better. Yeah, you know, and that's what we're looking to do. Good. So, so uh, I got a, a, a final question I do want to ask you, but before I do that, anything else with Asics Kiva going on that we haven't talked about that needs to get said today? No, not really. Uh, you know, I mean, pretty much running as normal. Uh, uh, we had started out with a good year. Uh, as I said, we'd like to have a better day yesterday, but you know, again, you're playing the best of the best, and it, it, I think this is not only challenging you physically, but it challenges you mentally. You know, you got to be you got to be ready up here when you're going to play teams like that. And so many times we get used to going through the first day of an event. Uh, most of it's a walkthrough type thing, getting ready to play, and and you just you can't do that here. Yeah. And I, I, you know, so uh, I I like that part of it. And, and I've always felt uh, you can learn from losing if you're paying attention. You can learn from getting beaten, and hopefully that's what we did yesterday. <laughs> Ron, Ron Cordes with Asics Kivo. So yesterday with a couple of people, we, we uh, played Word Association. Sean Hardy is the director of the Triple Crown Volleyball NIT. Sure. So in a second, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll give you a second to think about it. I'm going to say, Sean Hardy, you're going to say the first thing that comes to your mind, but I'll tell you this first. Sean, yesterday when I said your name, I said Ron Cordes to Sean Hardy. Yeah. He said, Godfather of Volleyball. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, that's, maybe you have that tattoo on you somewhere. I don't know if that's you know, your, your, yeah. work, your working name. But he called you the godfather of volleyball. So Sean Hardy, who directs this event, if I say his name, what do you say? Well, I'm trying to think of one word for it. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, what I'd say about Sean is he's the man. And by that, I mean he got this thing together. And it had been talked about for many years, bringing the West Coast and the Midwest and Texas all together in one place. Mm-hmm. And it had never happened. Yeah. So... I say kudos, John, or Sean. I mean, you got it done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's got been a great, great quite an addition. event going on here, yeah. buddy. Great yeah. addition to the schedule for these yeah. top clubs. Yeah. So you've got today. I know yesterday, a little, trying to get that taste out of your mouth. But you got today and tomorrow to play sure. some more good volleyball. So good yeah. luck with that, and thanks for coming on today. Appreciate Ron. it very much. It's a pleasure. That's Ron Cordes. Thank you.